que age bem, porque a gente está sempre torcendo para a Laude, a gente sempre torce para a Laude, a gente vai torcer para eles em qualquer time que eles estiverem. E sobre o Saci, o Pancada é, é brasileiro, é sangue brasileiro, a gente vai recepcionar muito bem, mas a Laude vai bater eles na final. Eu acho que as duas maiores torcidas vai ser Sentinels e Laude, não tem como. Com certeza. Mas eu acho que vai ser pegado, vai ser um 2x1, um, né? Porque a T1 é forte. Zero. Você acha que vai ser 2x0? 2x0 fácil. Eu acho que vai ser um 2x1. Um. É isso, e a Fúria eu acho que amanhã vai ganhar, com certeza. É isso. <risos> The Omega Bracket started off with 16 teams, and after today, we're going to be down to just eight. And if my math is right, that's half. Welcome back, everyone, to day nine of the lock-in, the biggest VCT event ever. And we're coming at you live from the Ginacio do Ibirapuera in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Of course, I'm Golden Boy here alongside Mimi and Achilles. Welcome, everyone. What a day we have lined up. To, what a way to close out the, the, the first part of this Omega Bracket. I have missed a day where we've gotten to see a Brazilian team play and gotten to see the crowd go crazy for them. Now we have a full Brazilian team. We have the reigning champions playing on Sentinels. Today is going to be fantastic. Yeah, it's going to be absolutely wild. Fnatic as well, having undergone some changes, looking like a bit of a powerhouse, going to be looking to challenge those former champions on the side of Sentinels, take them down. And then, of course, T1 is also on the, on the horizon. So we'll see how that goes. It's going to be an awesome day. But yesterday, though, we had three first-round matches, which means, unfortunately, three teams are out in this single elimination format competition. But first, let's talk about Vitality going the distance against Global Esports. And what a what a great game that was, both to show Vitality really pulling through at the end, but also to see what this experiment with Global Esports was capable of doing. Yeah, it started so strong for Vitality, the absolute, the just Sheriff Savant on the squad popping off. But GE fought back. They managed to take a map with their players really coming alive on Pearl. Yeah, it was a really good run back, and that's exactly what you want to see as a team that does not crumble after getting slaughtered on a first map. It was a great run back, and still a decent performance as well going into that final map of Lotus, but unfortunately GE just looks like they need a little bit more time. They had that Vitality Core that's been together for a while. Then we headed on to the introduction of Foot Esports and RRQ on an international stage, and Foot was fantastic on Lotus. They looked so incredibly oh, yeah. coordinated. Kiwi was playing out of his mind, offing on Neon, running in on these gambits, doing it all, but again, it was another one of these games where it looked like it was going to be a rally back. RRQ came into Pearl with this idea of just being as cringe as possible with their B post plans, <laughs> and it worked in the first half. Yeah, had him in the first the half. Not gonna half, lie. And then, uh, <laughs> and then it got real damn confusing. Pansy and I were losing our minds up on that yeah. cast because they were doing some wild stuff. But this was the banger of the day: Hundred Thieves versus EDG. I think a lot of people thought this was going to be a lot more one-sided, but EDG, good God, they showed Kichu's up just, to perform. He's my favorite player. Chichu was <laughs> phenomenal. You had Kong Kong going back to the jet, also just wild. Uh, Chichu, I don't know, just some divine intervention. He is God's gift to Valorant. I, yep. I don't know how that man <laughs> is so incredibly good. He's but blessed. Stellar was too. Stellar was having like a, a matching, if not even better performance to keep 100 Thieves in it. The game almost slipped away from them, but they came back at the last second. I mean, yesterday was just a day of crazy, crazy comebacks, and it, it's wild that that's just the opening matches. Yeah. I have been just shocked with the, the the fact that we come into this competition, you know, everyone online is like, oh, my God, this is going to be a 2-0. Oh, this team should blah, blah, blah. And then, That's you actually know, just me talking. Or or that. Uh, and and we were really treated to some to some special matches. And I think, you know, we got a lot, we got to see a lot out of footballers. We got to see a lot out of RQ, EDG, proving that, you know, that team, that team is definitely the pride of, of, of the Chinese, Chinese region. Yeah. It's going to be awesome. But let's go ahead, though, and take a look at the Omega Bracket and see see how our Valorant pizza is filling out here because as you can tell we have two more matches today and oh my goodness two matches that you're gonna wanna just strap in and get ready for because this is gonna be exciting we got Sentinels versus Fnatic that's gonna be an America's EMEA clash and then the Pacific takes the stage once again T1 versus Furia here in Brazil uh, that's gonna be tough it's going to be tough, Seth. It is. I mean, they're going to have that hometown crowd behind them as well. The Brazilians cheering for the Brazilians. So T1, they've got a lot to deal with. So we'll see if they're going to be up the task. Pacific has overall been looking quite strong here at this event. But can they make it through the next round? Or is it really only going to be secret 
in that role. We'll have to just wait and see. That would be wild. Again, we're just kind of getting, I think, surprises from a lot of these regions, especially like EMEA on a live region again. That's pretty cool to see. They've actually sent out some solid teams in this one. But yeah, I think that T1 Furia match is going to be a sleeper. Everyone's Very looking exciting. at Sentinels Fanatic, but that one's going to be good. You know, I, I tell you what, though, this event has genuinely been a marathon and yeah. you know speaking for myself <laughs> oh, guys you know I'm, <laughs> I'm i'm old you know i'm i'm, I'm wiped how are you guys feeling it's you're been, tired honestly there's just been too much good valorant it's it's it just been. it's too much for my brain to process it like drains your energy you just need a map a, a little nap sometimes you know what actually mimi said why don't you guys go ahead just take a take a little you know, nap I'm here just on gonna the desk recline back in my yeah sponsor idea. branded secret lab chair. yeah 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 you know and, and, you know what but Why don't I tell you guys a little story? I I never go to bed without a story. A bedtime story? I, of course. I really want a bedtime story. Yes. Uncle GV, please. Well, you here you go, kids. Let me tell you the story of Sentinels and Fanatic. I love this one. <gasps> That's right. Here we go. <clears throat> it all started with Sentinels and Fanatic facing off in the grand finals of Reykjavik 2021. Sentinels went undefeated throughout the entire tournament. No one has done it ever since. Wow. Do you guys remember when Tens had one of the most amazing amazing performances on land of all time. I watched that. I, I hecking love Tens. It was so good. Watch your mouth there, kid. This is the children's show. I, I'm sorry, Uncle GB. It won't happen again. <sighs> okay, moving on, though. But here's the thing with Sentinels. Things then took a dark turn. Oh, I love Sentinels. Yes, that's right. They didn't make any changes for quite some time. They struggled to adapt and got left behind. 2022 was a frightening year for them. They disappeared into the shadows with sadness and despair until now. What? what I Uncle mean, GB. What about Fnatic? Oh, well, I'm so glad you asked, young Sethi. Surely their story was happier. Well, here's the thing. After Fnatic lost at the Reykjavik finals, they took a different path. They made moves left and right with their roster, and the strategy changed. That's right. They were favorites heading into 2022, but then they never made it to a final again. Guy out there, do you, am I telling the story or are you? Seth, be, let him talk. Sorry, I'm cool, GB. <sighs> But they never made it to a final ever again. N never again? Never. Surely both these teams can't have a sad ending. There, there has to be finish. a different ending to the book. <sighs> well, my children, that's the fun part because the final chapter hasn't been written yet. Sentinels and Fnatic will meet for the first time since 2021 today. It really is a fairy tale. Wow, we. <laughs> How do you want this story to end? Why don't you go ahead and tell us in today's poll question? <laughs> uh, if the chat's not spamming cringe, I'm, I'm disappointed in each and every one they of you. They definitely are. Do you want a Sentinels win? Do you want a Fnatic win? Or do you heck and love tens? Or is it Durkin time? What does Scan that mean? The, this, this like Power, Power Rangers, Rangers reference. Scan the QR young. code and cast your vote down below. <laughs> Mimi, are I'm you a, serious? Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I just proved I'm six years old. I Bile still need through. a bedtime story. How am I going to understand oh. the reference? How many more stories do you have in the book? That I, book is thick. I have quite a few, and obviously all good tales are told in comic book sands. Anyway, make sure you use the hashtags for VCT Lockin and VCT, of course, and we'll put your tweets on the broadcast. And if you want to react to that segment, God bless. In any case, though, we're going to step away for a quick minute, and then when we come back, we're going to break down one of the most hype matches of all of VCT Lock in Sentinels versus Fnatic. Let's we'll see now. you on the other side. Oh, yeah, there we
Welcome back to the lock-in. Let's go ahead and jump into our first match of the day. We have one that's muy picante. It's going to be Sentinels versus Fnatic. And what sucks, genuinely, is that we're going to lose one of these teams in the first round of the tournament. This feels like a cruel joke. Yeah, I mean, it's like, you know, C9, Paper X. It is sometimes parting is such sweet sorrow, but unfortunately, one of them's got to go. Ah, breaks my heart. But first, though, let's talk about this new and improved Sentinels lineup. And look, folks, this is a very different team from last year. I mean, just nuts to see these names wearing those jerseys. Yeah, I mean, Sentinels, they pick up Cyclos, the coach, and they started cooking. I, they pick up two world champions in Sassi and Pancada, add that to the roster alongside Depp, alongside Zekin coming over from that set roster, and then, of course, that foundation there in tens. This is a very terrifying team on paper. But again, as we have said so many times about a lot of those powerhouse rosters that we have seen at this tournament, Drew, does it come together once they take the stage? It feels like for Sentinels, they finally had a switch in mentality. For all of 2021, the story was the culture is bad. This team isn't trying enough. They're not getting enough coaches. They're not adapting to the meta. Yeah. That was what everyone was saying about them. And the organization completely switched for 2023. They started with the coaches. They built from the ground up, picked up players one by one, and are assembling a completely new roster with a new culture culture from, fr uh, from scratch, which is bound to have brand new expectations. Yeah, and also there was, uh, uh, we had an opportunity to talk to Tens, and this is what I thought was really fascinating about this, because one of the things that I asked him was, did you just get on this team because, you know, you're heckin' Tens? And he was like, no, we, they, Cycle was actually trialing players. He was uncertain if he was going to even be on Sentinels for this year. The whole team was under the impression that the only person staying was Dapper, which is, you know, again, Dapper, incredibly talented player, no doubt, but the fact that you had a player like Tens trialing goes to show the culture in this team is completely different. I think it's really important because the, the previous accomplishments, 2021, what they had in the past, that's all great, but it means nothing for this team now, right? How good of a player are you now? How well can you fit into the team? How coachable are you? That was what was important for Sentinels heading into this year, and I think it's a great mentality shift. Yeah, and I think just having those trials as well just helps to make sure that you are building a cohesive unit of a yeah. squad rather than just saying, this piece is good, this piece is good, cramming them together and hoping that you get magic from it. Yeah, and and also, for, for Tens, right, this is going to force him to, to reinvent himself. He's playing new roles on this team. He's changing things up. And I think it, it's, a, it's a very good arc for him as an individual player and for this team. Yeah, well, in, in one of the arcs that I've been really fascinated with has been Sassi and Pinkata, right? Uh, my bald brethren. But most importantly, uh, when we actually had that opportunity to talk to him, he, he said that coming and playing in NA, like he accomplished his goal yeah. in, in Brazil. He won a championship for his countrymen. So now he's like, I want to do something that I never thought I'd have an opportunity to do. And he's now on this Sentinels lineup, and he brought his boy Pencada with him. And also of note, Pencada has been learning English every single day after scrims for a few months now. The work that these two guys are putting in to make this roster happen is nothing short of impressive. It has been incredibly impressive. And when we got to see this team in the offseason, we got that sample at the Ludwig Tarek Invitational, I think a lot of people were disappointed in the coordination. They only had a week of practice. It was Pencada's first team in English. All this stuff wasn't quite working. But what was working was the individuals. This duo of Saucy and Pancada was absolutely excellent, as we've come to expect from them. They are world-class championship winning players. Yeah, and it's unsurprising that, you know, they get picked up by an org like Sentinels. They say, you know what, we want to have a powerhouse team. Let's get some championship yeah. wins. Let's get some recency as far as the international stage is concerned. So they flesh that out with depth and second, and then Tens earns his spot back here onto the roster. So incredible story. I'm looking forward to seeing how they perform. Yeah, it, it really has been a fascinating story for Sentinels all season long. So for a closer look, let's go ahead and actually hear from Sassi and Tens about their journey. Oi, meu nome é Saci, eu sou o iniciador e jogo pela Sentinels. Meu time basicamente é composto pelo Brian, né? o Brian é o pancada, eu sou parceiro dele desde a Laude, a gente já ganhou bastante campeonatos juntos, então ele é o cara mais calmo do time, ele é o Pilar. Tens e o Zekin, eu gosto de falar dos dois juntos porque eles têm uma personalidade muito parecida, eles são mais brincalhões, eles são os mais novos também, e normalmente são os, os caras que têm mais mira, então é bem engraçado jogar do lado deles, eles estão aprendendo bastante, e claro tem o Death, que é o capitão. Ele é o cara mais centralizado, vamos dizer assim. Então ele passa as causas, ele, tem, ele passa a calma. Então ele tem uma sabedoria muito grande e dá pra confiar nele bem fácil. Vai ser um sentimento muito misturado, né? Jogar pra, 
na frente da torcida brasileira, principalmente agora que eu tô numa, numa organização americana, mas eu acredito sim que eles vão torcer por nós, principalmente por mim, pelo Brian, e apoiar nosso time durante o campeonato. Eu acho que sempre foi um sonho meu de jogar num time estrangeiro e finalmente estou aqui agora. E o que eu estou experienciando é que a cultura é muito diferente, isso é bem legal. A gente tem um canadense, a gente tem um britânico, tem dois brasileiros, aí tem um americano. Então as personalidades, a gente meio que aprende um com o outro. Então está sendo uma experiência bem bacana. Eu estou muito ansioso para ver a gente dentro do, do stage. Hello everyone, I am Tens. I am a player for Sentinels. I play the role as an operator, but also play as a flex. The difference between this iteration of Sentinels and the past iterations, this one is definitely more structured. We have a foundation of how we want to run the team. So we have lots of coaches and everyone has a defined role. We have a lot of protocols as a team. Previously, Sentinels had a pretty good record against Fnatic and hopefully we can keep that up, but I know they actually revamped the roster and they're considered quite a super team in the EMEA division, so we shall see what happens. I hope we have a good match and we can show what we're both capable of. And I think that that is the, uh, the thing that we all have to kind of take into this, right? This is not the Sentinels of the past. Sure. This is a completely different team. But also, if I can be just a, a touch, you know, I guess critical or worrisome here, it's that it is a completely different team with a completely different system. And Psycho's got his uh, work cut out for him. Oh, he certainly does, but we've seen wilder systems already have some innate success. I mean, take a look at Global yesterday. It's clearly, the foundation is there for them to be able to build a very solid roster and be competitive in the Pacific region. So I think with if that kind of crazy system can work where you're pulling people from so many different regions, so many different languages being spoken, then this one absolutely can. But we need to see that last little line there from tens i hope that we can both show what we're capable of that's what we're all hoping for as well because we have high expectations of both of these squads and if this match is not a giga banger at the end of the day <laughs> it will be a letdown <laughs> for everyone yeah we saw the individual player quality in the off season and at previous events we know all these players can be great it's a question of leadership but i think it's one where i actually have a lot of faith in this team you have psycho who and psycho and death who built that exit roster yeah. you have kaplan who's been a fantastic coach in na you're really starting strong you also have saucy on the team i mean he's the guy built loud you have have that history there of players who can build legacies. Okay, now before we have any other people saying, ah, this desk is too biased toward Americas. It's just GB. Because we know it's going to happen. It's time to talk about the powerhouse juggernauts from EMEA. That's right, baby. I'm talking about Fnatic because this is a squad that is always at these international events. The skill on this team is absurd. And Mimi, I, look, they've had some highs and lows, but we know that they can reach those heights. Yeah, uh, you talked about it in your little story time earlier, but Fnatic in 2022 had had a rougher time, right? They were always looking fantastic online. We always had expectations above the world for them. They made it to land, they always did well, but they never did great. They never lifted a trophy. And that's what Fnatic has always been built for. Yeah, I mean, unlike Sentinels, the iterations of Fnatic have always been stronger and stronger as time has gone on, but they still have not been able to achieve what we have set the expectations to be. You know, that second and place. And also for and themselves it, too. Yeah, sure, of yeah. course. I mean, Think about how many times we've heard Boaster say, my expectation for this roster is lifting a trophy. Yeah, exactly. And so far, they haven't been able to do it, but now they've made some changes. You've got Leo coming into this roster. Chronicle, an absolute Ooh. legend of the sport, also joining this squad. It is stacked top to bottom. And maybe this is finally the time that they will be able to lift that trophy. You heard it from Tens. This is super team versus super team. This is some of the absolute best players that EMEA has to offer. Yes. Chronicle, a, a champion in Berlin, a support player that helped Gambit reach their height. You have Leo, probably one of the most hyped up support players around. His time in guild playing initiator was fantastic. This feels like the right fanatic to finally lift a trophy. Yeah. But they still have to get there because we say this most events we see this team. But it's like I, I feel like coming into this one, uh, I, I'm a believer, man. I want to be a believer. Because you always want to believe. I, I know. But you know what? I always got to believe in my boy Poster. But yeah. here's the thing. Uh, unfortunately, though, we do have an update about this match that we do need to address. Uh, there is a, a statement that uh, should have gone out as well. But of course, the health and safety of our players and staff at VCT Lockin is our highest priority. After taking a self-requested test, a member of Fnatic unfortunately uh, produced a positive result in the event a player returns a positive result for COVID-19, but feels well enough 
enough to compete and chooses to play, the affected player will play the scheduled match on a LAN network build in the quarantine facilities. Now, the player who tested positive will compete from that isolation room while their teammates and the opposing team will be competing here in the venue. Uh, of course, the order of the matches is very important. The order of the matches on this given day uh, did not change. Everything's fine. Like, we're, we're going with our matches as scheduled. Yep. Um, but we did want to let everyone know that that is, uh, the, unfortunately, the reality here. So even though that is a, an issue, it is still good that they will be able to play with their full team. Yeah, and I think it's important to note that they did choose. They wanted to go forward playing with their starting yes. five. They feel well enough to do that, and that's what we want. We want to see both these teams at full strength. Yeah, yeah. but now we put the spotlight, though, on the new additions to Fnatic. Two, I mean, I keep using this word, but heavyweights that are coming in here to line this up. I feel like I'm just talking about Brock Lesnar on repeat over and over again. Leo and Chronicle look fantastic. Coming into this lineup, they are going to be so scary, Mimi. Yeah, what has Fnatic been missing in the past? It's always been critique of their support players, of the backup line. We always know Boaster's going to make calls. We always know Alpha and Durka are going to pop off. But what they've needed is an all-star support squad, and I think that's what they picked up in the offseason. I mean, again, Chronicle, absolute legend of the game, and it's a shame that, you know, much like the rest of that game before, we haven't been able to see them on an international stage here until today. But now he's on such a powerful team, and if he can still have those wild impacts, those crazy aces, if you remember that bind play from him, uh, then this is going to be an absolutely terrifying match for Sentinels to go up against. Let's go ahead, though, and set up a matchup, shall we? Sure. It's a thing that we like to do on the desk because we enjoy a good narrative, and the ones that we're going to be talking about here, Tens and Durka. Yep. Durka, probably one of my favorite players. I'm trying to get him to 200,000 followers. We have to make this happen. But now you also have Tens, who on the other side of it, is coming to this with so much hype, but I feel like we're just seeing a different version of him here, maybe. Yeah, these two guys were in the in early Valorant. They were the icons of the game. Tens and Durka at Reykjavik. They were probably the two best individuals that we got to see there. And they faced off in that grand final. It was a fantastic performance from both of them. But so much has changed in the nearly two years since then. Yep. I mean, Tens is going to be playing the flex role. He's still offing. Durka, he stuck to similar roles, but his performance has stayed the same. He also got rid of his hair. <laughs> He's joining in with GB. Hey, yeah, lots of change. Bald buff, baby. It's a real thing. Tens okay. Is blonde now. Tens is like so much has changed. You know, she's, he's in his uh, his edgy uh, era right now. <laughs> All right. Well, look, guys. For more on this new Fnatic lineup, let's actually go ahead and hear from Boaster and Leo about Fnatic. Hello, my name is Boaster. I'm the IGL of Fnatic. Okay, I'll start off with Durka. He, he brings the bold buff, as, you, as you, everyone knows. Um, he also brings the high skill capabilities in a top fragger. And then we've got Alfia. He's a 17 year old in a 30 year old body. He's got crazy bed hair, and that bed hair is a symbol of how crazy he is in real life as well. Then we've got Chronicle. He's the guy that's like really keen and really I don't know, he just loves learning stuff. And we've got Leo. Now he's the he's the, the comedian of our team, like always making jokes and always laughing, you know. He's very flamboyant and very uh, excitable. Hi, I'm Leo and uh, I play for Fnatic and uh, my role is initiator. I think chemistry plays a huge part in a team. Uh, if you're not getting along outside the server, it's, it's gonna be very tough to have trust in game. Uh, obviously, there's a situation where the team still has success, but in the off-season we've been uh, enjoying company of each other outside the game more than playing. Uh, but now we're really in the focus zone and uh, building up the trust in game also. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. With uh, Leo and Chronicle, we got 100% land win rate. So uh, <laughs> that's that's unheard of for Fnatic. Uh, we're normally losing. So uh, don't know what's happened there. But if we can keep that momentum, then I'm I'm gonna be pretty happy. Having both as an ideal is uh, he puts a lot of work in, which I admire. Uh, that's what he wants from your leader in the team. I'm feeling super confident for this event, and I'm super excited for everyone to see what uh, we've been cooking up. I want to put on a great show for the Brazilian fans in the audience and for all the people watching at home as well. I really want this to be a really fun tournament for us. We hope to do you proud, and you know, let's go Fnatic.
firstly, I just want to give a huge shout out to our features team for just continuing to pump out amazing content. But also, <laughs> Poster is the best <laughs> when it comes to all this stuff. He's so charismatic. It's hard not to like this team, Mimi. It is really hard not to like them. I mean, both these teams have just such like fun-loving, enjoyable players. You want to root for both of them. But again, single elimination, this is going to be a brutal one. Yeah, I imagine the features team also really likes working with Poster because you don't have to encourage any personality out of him. He's just exuding it. He, yeah. You have to tell him, like, okay, calm it down a little bit. You're going <laughs> a little too ham. I know, and that is why we love Boaster. That's why we love this Fnatic team, and we're so excited for this matchup. But we're going to take a quick break. Our first match is going to be coming up in just a few minutes. Don't go anywhere. It's going to be awesome. Earlier on in the show, we took a poll and asked you wonderful people, how do you want the tale of Sentinels and Fnatic to end? And uh, found out that the results are in. Let's actually see if it's Durkin time. It's going to be a heck and love time. Uh, yeah. <gasps> okay, I'm just going to say, Valorant community, hello. It's Durkin time is like the best thing ever, all right? Why is it only 9%? Actually tilted. Because <laughs> most of the people watching this, are they don't know what Power Rangers is, much like Mimi. <sighs> I didn't know what Power, Power Rangers is, and I, I'm the one who said we should put that on the poll. <laughs> so <laughs> that was kind of random, but uh, all good. All right, well, guys. Uh, we have a, a minute left, so let's do some predictions, shall we? It, I know it, I, I'm going to go first. Okay. My reasoning, it's not because of America's bias. I just got a feeling. And also, I really wanted to draw their logo. I went with Sentinels for the win. Please do not flame me, EMEA. I love all of you flame dearly. Him. I might need a close-up for mine just because it's writing. But uh, What does it say? Just show it. I have no biases here, but it's just straight up who I think is going to win. I'm bat-chesting bat <laughs> out of my mind. <laughs> You're back, Justin. All it. right, we need some good, honest balance on this on this desk because this is going to be a giga banger. Two super teams. Yes. I favor Fnatic. What does they that have say? the core. Uh, it says I, dude. We need to bring back teaching cursive in school because this is abysmal. What but it is says this? I heck and love tens. Okay. But, that, but you have Fnatic. Okay, you make. I no still sense heck and love tens, even if I think Fnatic is going to win. That's oh fine. man. All right. Still heck and love tens. Guys, I hope you're ready because this is going to be a great match. I hope everyone just takes a moment to breathe this one in because you don't get it all the time. It's time to start this show and find out who survives another round, Korea or Brazil, Durka or Tens. It's going to be a heckin' great day of Valorant, and folks, lock in. Day 9 starts right now.
this doesn't get the blood pumping, you might need to check your pulse because you could be dead. This is what it's all about, baby. Sentinels versus Fnatic, a clash of titans here in the first round in our Omega bracket. And Mimi, I am absolutely excited. It has been 635 days since we have seen these two teams face off. Now we've got new players, a new meta, new expectations, and they're back on stage again. And this time, only one of them can continue with their tournament live. And it's such a shame to have to lose somebody here right off the rip between these two, but it just hopefully means that they're going to be fighting tooth and nail Ooh, because boy. they do not want to go home. This is, you know what, uh, to quote, and I make this reference oftentimes, but to quote one of the greatest commentators in professional wrestling, good old JR, Jim Ross, this is going to be a slobber knocker, okay? It, this genuinely could not be the most hyped matchup uh, in, in this entire bracket. It's it, like, it feels as if we're, we're witnessing like uh, the main event, and this is just our first match of the day. It is wild to see. We have the map feeders already coming in. Fnatic will get rid of Pearl off the start. Sentinel showed some of that in the offseason. Tends to be a very strong map for a lot of North American teams. Makes sense. Same with Sentinels. Icebox has always been Fnatic's best. Yep. Yeah, I mean, also, that X set core, quite good at Pearl, so they have a lot of strategies. Yeah. Second can go over to that Neon. Looks incredible. But mm -hmm. Fnatic, with the first selection, will go ahead and elect to take us back to Haven, something that we have been seeing fairly consistently, maybe not in the last couple days of Omega, but sure. over in the Alpha bracket especially. Saw a hell of a lot of Haven, and okay. Sentinels are going for split. Uh, this makes a lot of sense. You rewind the clock to X set back when this map was in the pool, and Def was one of the absolute best callers on this map. That core was fantastic on it. You're implementing new talent, and sure, it's a new roster, but I still think it'll be a good map for them. Set going to be taken away. Lotus still being floated right now. See if Sentinels ban it, and they don't. They're they going to take away the it fracture. They were the offseason, so it's clear that they didn't want to play it then, but they've been prepping something now to leave it to our third. What are they cooking? What are they cooking? Oh, boy. I am excited. So we have Haven, Split, and Lotus if necessary. But let's be honest, folks. I think we're going the distance. One can only hope. The unfortunate I... thing about this event so far is that aside from a couple matches such as Energy versus Loud, some of the ones that look like they're going to be giga bangers on paper and just haven't quite delivered, but surely there's just no way that this one doesn't. Prime Gaming Agent select on our screens now. My question is, what is Tens going to play? He's been switching up roles. He's been moving on to KO, flexing around, and letting Zekin be the primary duelist. Does that continue? Whoa, what's Alpha going to play? Oh, yeah, that's a good question. I mean, he's always been an incredibly flexible individual. Probably the Sentinel. He's back on his okay. kill drop. That makes sense. But what about Tens? Yes. He gets the Jet on this one. It's a flip-flop from what we saw at the LTI. Jet v. Jet, Durka versus Tens. I mean, you couldn't really ask to start the series <laughs> off in a better fashion. 2021, Iceland. Haven ended the series. And it was it was Sentinels who took that one home in a Tens versus Durka matchup. We get it again here, Jet v. Jet. And we're starting it off right here on Haven. Well, folks, we got a clout match, which means that we got to call in some pretty clout mat clout casters. Actually, I would say clout chasers. Here's Brandon Sideshow. <laughs> Yeah, let's get to it. This match right here is going to be something special because it's North America versus EMEA, Sentinels versus Fnatic, an age-old matchup, a classic matchup, Josh, because like the desk was saying, the last time these two teams faced off yeah. was so long ago, May 30th, 2021, at the Reykjavik Grand Finals. Yeah, and both of these teams have taken very different paths to get here, yeah. and yet, in 2023, both Fnatic and Sentinels have tried to form super teams heading into the partnership system. And I think for Boaster particularly, but also for Def on the other side, it's a hunt for a trophy and one team must go home. What do they have cooked up for us to start things out on Haven? And Haven, bit of a playground for the IGLs. Maybe that's part of the reason why Fnatic ended up opting into this one, but not messing around already. That Trailblazer just going deep into the site, and Tenz was following that one, but he was shut down in the middle of all of this. This looks like a fast play now. Just trying to make their way through into Garage. Going to be potentially bogged down by all this utility, but there was a flash in play just to push them back and away. Fnatic already claiming two kills. It's up to Sentinels now to scramble, try and salvage what they can out of the round. A bit of damage done to Chronicle, but right now just biding their time, waiting it out. It's on death to try and make something happen here. No pressure anywhere else, and Dirk has walked down mid. He knows that the spike is dropped. He knows they're all contained inside Garage. This should be Fnatic easily cleaning up. Yep, they know exactly what's going on here. Sheriff in the hands of Dirk. 
Already getting some lovely damage down onto them and right through the wall. It's three kills in the round for Durka. What a way to set things up and nobody dropping on the side of Fnatic. That's a prime gaming flawless. We're going to be keeping track of Durka being 10 throughout this entire map. But I want to shoot 10s a bit of bail here. This is a pretty normal pathing, actually, on a pistol round strat. We've seen a lot of teams do it. He looks a bit silly, sure, but I don't think there's anything wrong with his decision making or the game plan. It is, though, a pistol round strat where 10s is very alone. He just has to dive in and hope that there aren't a couple of people at back B for a C pinch. So definitely a planned pistol round strategy for Sentinels, but the reaction was very good from Fnatic. And they strike the first blow. No force buy, nothing crazy happening here. And Sassy loading up his ultimate. I do think it's really interesting though, Bren, that Sassy is playing the sky here. When you think about Sentinels, you're expecting Sassy to be the safe pair of hands. The guy that's a veteran, king of initiators, safest player in the game. Just able to really pick up the pieces when things go wrong. But yeah, and, and it, having him on Sky instead of on Breach, it's a really aggressive comp from Sentinels. And I think it's going to ask Sassy to get really involved in the fighting. Yeah. And that's that's unusual to me. I would expect Sassy and Zekin's roles to be swapped. It is an interesting one, isn't it? Breach oftentimes going to be that third player into the fight most of the time. By the way, I mean, Durka is just farming up so many of these kills that he's, he's, up, his ult. Yeah, he's up to his ultimate already. So yeah. the economy could not be in a better spot for Fnatic. They've also got a bunch of rifles heading into this round anyway. So again, I think they're going to let Sentinels set the pace. Sometimes on a bonus round, you'll see the defending team do something really aggressive. And Fnatic were known for pushing down uh, into a lobby pretty heavy on the defense, but S Sentinel's comp should be setting the tempo. Yeah, it's rifles across the board for Fnatic, so they manage their economy well enough that they're going to be even in terms of those weapons against Sentinels. Dirk is feeling it. Yeah, he is. I mean, the dash active right now, looking to try and take an early fight. He sees the head. What <laughs> is that? Rolling back the years with that one, Deb. Straight through the wall. I mean, just a little juggle and a shot. That's all it took. Trailblazer now going to be trying to what make a great through. Garage, what a great nano swarm! Yeah, it that breaks nano, it, right? It does. It breaks any kind of utility that is channeled. So if you've got a sober, it breaks the drone. If it's you know sassy there, Trailblazer, and that allows Alpha yet to keep his turret up. They don't spam it through the wall. So map control advantage to Fnatic, but they're still four v five, and they've got a good read that this is ending A. With a stack in the play that they've got currently, making sure that. Every option's watched for. Look at that crossfire. I mean, they've just got so many layers to this. But also, Leo pretty heavily committed in short. Yeah. Quite wide. It's going to be a fault line. Now to stun as well, so Leo can't see too much. Does have that dart, but does he want to use it? After shock into the corner, a bit of spam. Just finds his targets. Wow. Beaming him down, wow. and it's pure instinct play. Three kills from Leo, who's just anchoring that position. But it is down to Alfie in this 1v2. Spike gets planted, finds the kill. Smoke dissipating at just the wrong time for Zekin. And now he's backing away. Ten's holding close to the angle on Graffiti, and he just found it anyway. Right to the side there. Ever so slight off angle to get that one. And so Sentinels are on the board, but they did end up losing four of their players in that round. Yeah, it's, it's damaging to the economy for sure. But I think with Durka, being dominant in the first couple of rounds, Tens instantly fires back. The, the heroics from Leo are incredible here, and he's definitely a player to keep an eye on, but what we didn't spot was that the actual sighted itself coming from long. Tens was able to get all of that utility and push forwards. Yeah. I thought the economy would be looking good here for Fnatic, but they're choosing not to commit off the back of Durka's knives. They must have bought up a little too much. Not something that I had realized looking at round three. I thought they were going for a bonus. Yeah, it looked that way, didn't it? Had enough spare cash maybe to make the purchase, but like we said earlier, Durka built up to these blade storms. Wasn't able to get too much done there. In fact, I think the dash that he activated, it does fade away. Not going to have that available to him. But slow and steady is the game plan for both of these sides. And Durka's making a bit of a read here that the play's going over towards C. And you can see that both teams are kind of mirrored in terms of their rotations. Dirk has got a nice idea about it. Maybe Def's going to try and create a bit of pressure in B, but this is ending with a C split, and they're going straight into the shorty. Oh, Durka wow. with a bit of revenge. What a kill to find, Javier. Oh, my goodness. Just walked away from the door for about a moment. Could have found an easy kill with a shorty, but he will fall. Now a 
lot of flashes just being committed into the back of the site. Clears that one down. It's going to be a plant as well without too many problems. Util chipping him forwards, but Tenz is quite isolated now. He's holding the back of the side by himself, and that fight at the flank was imperative. Durka wins it out. A little bit strained in its approach. Tenz with the updraft play. Aftershock as well. Leo just trying to trade it out, swinging through, and Tenz still claims three. Down to Durka now. Another dash. Let's come online here, right into the smoke to cut up the crosshair placement. That gives him a good idea of where these players are, but again, just a battle taking place. Tries to spray it down, and that jet head to head just manifesting itself in the round. The desk hy hyped it up as Tens versus Durka. And that is how these compositions work. All of the utility is going to be used to set Tens and Durka up on the best fights possible. And you're just seeing them clash. They're not necessarily taking the duels against each other early in the round. They're massacring everybody else before they finally meet in the 1v1. That's another quite expensive round for Sentinels, but it's on the board at two apiece. Light armor for everybody on Fnatic, and an operator in Durka's hand. He explores down mid as Tenz takes an early oh face my. into A long. But this looks push. awkward for Durka. Deep push, a slight angle. And he's burning his dash at the beginning of every one of these rounds. Yeah. Free called star there. Going to be pushing him away from that angle now while all this was going on as well. It was a bit of a slow burn on Alpha Sentinels as they are just trying to make sure that they get a bit of space in A short. This Trailblazer up close, Leo. This is so advanced from Leo. Yeah, he's there. He doesn't really have anybody watching his back, but Fnatic are committing a lot of players here to the site. You can see this, and the Rolling Thunder's going to be catching them, actually. Leo going to be caught. Flash play, and, well, the knife's just not good in that kind of position, but Boaster was isolated. Now a drone. Fault line as well cuts across, and Dirk is still there, holding the angle at heaven. He knows what his players are, and he will find them time and time again. One after the other, but Sentinels will answer back. And it's just down to Sassy. Positioning, I believe, known. He's going to get reinforcements as Alfie is going to be rejoining him at Heaven. Spike out in the open now. Will he get an easy fight? Just trying to isolate one of them, but no. Jiggle of the positioning. Leo doesn't give away too much now. 28 seconds left in this round. Time starting to get burnt, and now he knows where the second player is. That's one broken. Just trying to isolate one of these fights, and well, the warbang angle. Alfie here just about grabbing that kill. Such a back and forth round. I think Boaster's kill onto Tens really seals the deal for it. Yeah. It, he's not favored in that situation. Breach ulted up, and, you know, Tens also not taking the most favorable duel in the world. It was really messy between the two of them. There's a missed fault line, too, for Durka to be able to grab the kill onto Zekken. And I think Def should have swung before Durka got a second. Maybe slightly miscoordinated from Sentinels, allowing openings for, for the Fnatic players. But this is really back and forth. But this is where you now see, Bren, the economic damage that was done earlier because Sentinels only lose one round and they drop down to an eco. So left to stew and think about what they really want to be doing in this round here. Looks like they are just trying to slowly push towards the B side. Trailblazer gets a decent amount of information. Dash forwards by tens there. That's just trying to even get this plant down as an aftershock. So Tenzi app is going to be paying for that one with his life. A bit of, again, spam from the Phantoms at play. Tap onto the spike. Post plant positions being played here by Sentinel. It's going to take a miracle for them to just get much else with it. Yeah, a bit of jumping and running and gunning from Leo. But already the spike just being stuck through all of this pressure. They didn't have the weapons or the util to be able to push them back. But ultimately, the goal of Sentinels there was to just try and get a couple of kills, maybe as well, that plant, so they can start building up the bankroll once more. What they have done, though, is fed the Fnatic ult economy. So Chronicle's got his ult online, Leo now with the Hunter's Fury too. And that means that this round coming up, round seven, is going to be massive. I'm, I think a lot of ults are going to get used, and if Sentinels lose it, they're back down onto another eco. This is a must-win round for Sentinels, I think, in order to get the first half off to a good start. Alpha, yeah, by the way, has picked up the Operator now, over on C. And a deep dash from Durka. He's not... Wasting any time, is he? That's a deep dart as well, a set play, but Zekin up close and personal within the cloud burst. Takes out the threat of Durka. But a pincer attack as well. Boaster was trying to make the most of the chaos. Pushed up into, oh my goodness, into A lobby, and he's even finding a couple of kills of his own, potentially no. Ends up going down before he could claim the second. The trade was there. The timing's so messy there from Fnatic. I understand that it's a set play, but Sentinels had a lot of windows with which to reinforce their position. 
Alpha, yeah, missing that shot. It's very wide swing. Dog will miss though, so not stand up. He can afford to just retake this angle and just on the arm of death. What a shot to hit. Giving him just nigh a pistol, but now you're gonna see already pushing through this one with the rolling thunder. The ultimate to try and clear it away, and the players had to vacate. Sentinels trapped in the cubby, and Alfie has got that line of side angle. Watch for once more, but the spike. And then over to Pankada, he's got his ultimate, so he's going to be able to get a free plant now onto A. 1v3. Can he do it? He's got a lot of time to threaten a reposition. He's going to smoke both I quite spawn like this. and A link. It's really smart. He's just the throwing fanatic. a bunch of misinformation into it, but this fight now by Leo Him, meeting him into short. It's Moving massive. The first kill. It's massive. Takes it down on 1v2, but he's given away where he is. What is that? Chronicle so far ahead of his teammate, there's no trade in sight from Alfie. Not a paranoia. Waiting for the top of the spike, and there it is. Rips his way across, a full blind. Another tap from Alfie, but still biting, waiting. Smoke ready and waiting. Wide swings of it, Alfie. So calm and patient in the clutch. Really big round from Alfie. After he missed that opening op shot, I thought it was game over for yeah. Fnatic. But he comes through and recovers. Perhaps you could argue that round should never have been that close. With Pancada, an opportunity to hit the 1v3. This one, beautiful. Just being able to isolate this fight as well. Look at that. Doesn't open himself up too wide with that second fight that he was taking. But ultimately, Alfie, really intelligent player. And this is th this has brutalized the Sentinels economy. They're going to be kicking themselves for that. Because like I said, that one decided which way the momentum was heading in the series so far. And Sentinels now are just down to stingers. Yeah, disrespecting that utility that was going Threw into a lobby. Oh, he knows. Durka knows. Ken's locked into this position. Even the utility, the shock dash, you can see it now. I have the shock, though. Durka has to respect that one. The dash to just disengage, make sure he doesn't take too much damage. Stingers can still be deadly if yeah. Durka gets caught out here by a flash. Damage. The flash actually doesn't connect onto Durka. Still there, ready and waiting into the corner. A trap play, and wow, Tens makes the most of it. A bit of whiffage there from Durga holding in a very aggressive angle. And now that they're in a 5v4 post plan, Def might choose to use his ultimate. Okay, there you go. Lockdown. Place down. Lockdown for a lockdown. How are you getting these kills? With the guns at hand. All up to Sassy. Stinger in his hands. Tries to whip out the pistol, but already being swarmed by the players now. The lockdown. Ah, oh, destroyed. Not a problem. Yeah, no issues whatsoever. And a ton of time on the clock anyway, yeah, even if they had all been fine. detained. Fnatic committing really decisively, though. If you want to talk about Fnatic's, you know, and, and more so boasters hunt for a trophy, it feels like they get to a certain point in a tournament, they play against a big team, and there's a bit of freezing up that happens. At least that's my perception yeah. of how Fnatic's trophy hunt has gone ever since that fated grand final against Sentinels. And this squad that they've got is full of really decisive players. Durka and Alfie are more than happy to make mid-round uh, playmaking. And so is Leo. Chronicle, the only player on Fnatic's team to have hoisted a trophy, knows what it takes to win. And, and I feel like so far Fnatic are making very quick decisions. Yeah. They're, not, they're not freezing up, they're not choking. They are adapting to everything that Sentinels is throwing at them. And this is a difference maker from previous iterations of Fnatic that we have seen. You know, they've spoken many times in the past about you know, being you know, quite a, a well thought out team in terms of how they play, but a lot of set plays and a lot of waiting on boasters' calls. Definitely. Not having that much you know, independence in terms of making those quick adaptive plays in the middle of rounds when you get a bit of information. But this is a roster that is stacked with that either veteran presence talent or talent that are very independent and willing to make those quick reactive calls. And it must be mentioned too that both Fnatic and Sentinels have not been together for very long. These teams of course, Fnatic, the, the core was still there of those three players and Sentinels blending a couple of different cores together. But yeah. in terms of practice time with these two rosters, they've only been in the server together for about two months. So things should still be a bit rough and ready. Yeah. But so far, we're seeing some really nice ideas and a lot oh of my. high caliber players. The Nana Swarm that was placed early there, that's to try and push back a potential play from the opposing Jet, like Durka here, he's pushed himself up onto this angle and brought down to 57 health, but still wants to take the angle. And look at how much freedom that gives the rest of Fnatic. Four players over towards B, Garage, and C. 
Because Durka just knows that this is fine. Yeah. I mean, he's actually on such a tight an angle that Pancada could slip past him. Okay, I don't think Durka corner. quite realizes that somebody's to his left. But he will watch it when they start to cross into this. Now, Trailblazer, here's a dog. This can give him a good idea of ending the kite. Chooses to vacate. Doesn't want to hold that angle. A bit too risky for him, but... And I like this from Sentinels. Contacting into A. Their composition has a lot of utility, but by contacting... Fnatic feel confident enough that they aren't rotating anybody over to A just yet. Boaster's hanging around for a little bit, now only just starting to make his way over. They might not be ready for this A explosion. Yeah, risky maneuver that could be played there. The stun is going to force Durka to not be able to scope in now. He can't really help them out, but already Boaster's trying to at least relieve some of that pressure, but the spam into hell catches onto Durka, the common angle that he was playing. Two players of Fnatic falling, including Chronicle, make that three. Leo opens himself up so wide there. Unfortunate timing with the smoke just fading away. What an answer by Sentinels off the back of that timeout today. They're talking about what they wanted to do differently. Perhaps that was part of it, what they were discussing, the contact play to make sure that Fnatic didn't have as much information to work with, that they couldn't rotate effectively. Yeah, I think at this point, that's got to be credited as a really nice uh, IGLN call by Def. I think... The idea of just using that single piece of utility to push Durka away and recognizing that reinforcements don't come that quickly, it's something that I've always loved about Def's calling, is that he mixes in those contact attacking rounds with big explosive executes. And remember that on Xset, he was mostly doing the calling and the micromanaging on the attack side. He kind of split duties with Aerith. And there were some tournaments where the attack side calling from XL looked phenomenal. And there was some where it was a little shaky. But when Def's on point, when he has a read on a game, it puts so much pressure on the other team. There's a bit of frustration there showing from Boaster, despite the fact that they're 6-3 up. But they're still only one round away from getting ecoed themselves. This whole time, the economy has been on a knife's edge. Oh, it's been back and forth, hasn't it? Neither side really being able to build up any sort of money in the bank. And Boast of this time taking a aggressive approach, just pushing deep into A lobby. There's a smoke at the back of it and that dart, so he does have peace of mind that nobody was pushed back. The spam now, and it's the same play by Sentinels. They're just looking to see if they can apply some of that pressure into Garage, break the doors, break the util. Should be able to hear that turret close as well. And their goal is going to be to break that. All of that A lobby utility and Boaster spamming is trying to fake that Fnatic have multiple players pushed up towards a lobby. This dog is going to notice that either there was nobody there or they've all dropped back. And look at how Fnatic react now. Instantly, off the Trailblazer, there's three players a day. Do Sentinels commit? Or do they turn it into a fake this time around? They're worried about that contact play. So this drone, oh, it's just mistimed, isn't it? This drone is useful for, that, for Fnatic, but it gives Sentinels a great timing. They can just walk through after this. And they're going to be taking it. They know of that big piece of util and the dart being committed. Yet still Fnatic are holding the players close. There's a Seekers now. Fault line through. That's just going to be used in response to try and slow them down. Even the Flash's tents can't quite see a thing. Even beefed his Flash for his own dash coming through. Trying to spray it down. Boaster does help them out. A bit of running what? gun in action. Okay. Three kills for him. And just backs away. Rotating around. No time on the clock. Tens. Percentage play now knows that there's not a chance in hell of him winning this round, so just has to save the rifle. He's going to get a backstab on Boaster here, but Boaster's already done the damage. Yeah. Amazing I, I defensive calling, and also, he's playing so much more aggressively in this game than I've seen from Boaster. And the difference maker there, honestly, was Boaster fighting really hard for it, but Chronicle actually helping him out with a util. Sure. That was the difference maker when Durka was holding that just by himself previously. Chronicle's util there was fantastic. Fault, the fault line, the flash, it caused tends to beef the dash. We might see it in the replay as well earlier, but all of that was just used excellently. And Boaster is playing so much more aggressively. You are right. Yeah, he's got confidence. I don't know if he's been working on his, you know, aim labs routine or what in the <laughs> offseason, but he's taking map control, challenging these players. He's not scared yeah. of the heavyweight big hitters on Sentinels. He's just taking it to them. That's what you need. It's kind of attitude mindset that whoa you really do need the knives oh my words it's the same kind of pathing from the pistol round but it doesn't work again yep. just too many stray blades just landing all over the place there gets a couple of the players low but oh, wow that shot just being found and 
And this is disastrous. Sentinels need a miracle here because going down eight rounds, giving eight rounds to Fnatic, brutal. Really, really brutal for them. They do need a miracle. Who's going to be the playmaker? Target's broken. Cosmic Divider cut across now. Moving forward. Sassy has to hold this. He knows he's being pushed. There's the first opener. Still Zekin. His positioning is known. A pop flash play. Moving forwards. And Zekin isolates the fights, but eventually shut down. Really, really well calculated there by Fnatic. Making sure that he didn't overstep themselves. Didn't give too much away. Very solid retake. And at this point, an extremely good half from Fnatic. 8-3 with a potential to go 9-3. Either way this final round goes, Fnatic have put on a really good performance here. Their retakes have been excellent, and apart from a couple of good moments from Sentinels, they've been able to work the defensive rotates into a position to shut down the pushes. We haven't seen Tens unlocked as much as perhaps Sentinels would have hoped for. Now we're heading into that final round of the first half here. Operator fight taking place. Durka wants to try and take it. Waits it out as well. Smart from him. Doesn't immediately go for the turret. Just waits for it as it's being activated. Just in case a player slips up and makes a mistake and peeks before it's ready. Tens even going for a shot of his own as well. Almost reacting to that jump peek. But now they know Tens is opping on attack. And that means that they should expect Sentinels to be playing a little slowly. Yeah. So Fnatic don't have to be as aggressive in terms of reclaiming the map and looking for information because they know that if they just kind of hold tight, Sentinels are going to be working a pick for probably the next 20, maybe even 30 seconds. They know it's going to be a slower paced round and look at this reposition by Alfie. Yet. Deep push <laughs> to the bottom of C. An area of the map, honestly, that hasn't been explored too much by Sentinels. When they've been going for these C hits, oftentimes it's through Garage. So this could be a really valuable backstab position if they tr decide to go for the C hit, which now just a contact play, breaking that alarm bot, but the positioning is going to be known now with 40 seconds remaining. Durka looks down the one angle, still going to be holding it down. Rolling Thunder to push him back, wants to take the shot before it goes through, but there we go. The extra layers that I was talking about earlier. Alfier locked and loaded, and it is disaster for Sentinels. Two players left standing with death falling all down to Zekin. A nasty shot to be found, but Alfier once more with that consistency. I think so many people were coming into this match wondering, which team would have the better super team? Is it America's or is it EMEA? And Fnatic have landed an emphatic first blow. Outstanding first half from them. You can clearly see why Fnatic opted into going into Haven as well. Very ready for it. He had so many different looks and changes to their defensive setups, honestly. Really falling across the board. And now, let's send it down to the desk to break down the first half so far. Thank you so much, Brennan Sideshow. What a half for Fnatic. They look absolutely filthy. I might need to take a bath. Yeah, I mean, they looked incredible in that half. The defensive-sided calling from Boaster was great. But what yep. impressed me most was their ability, even when their initial plan failed, to come back and still be able to win out rounds. And I wanted to take a look at round seven, because this was a really cool idea that I think they pulled out with this Gambit. They switched the off over to Alpha and had Durka dashing into mid off of a stun, a dart coming through lobby, and that Sylvus Hunter's, a Hunter's Fury. Wow. It's quite a good idea, but he got punished by Zek, and it looked like Sentinels was going to be able to win this round. But Fnatic, in the mid round, had a good adaptation. And a lot of that was Boaster's aggression. The casters talked about it. He gets up, he gets his, and he sets his team up for this really strong retake back into the seaside. Sure, Pencata got things closer to clutch, but overall, Fnatic Fnatic had control of that half, and Boaster's calls were solid. Yeah, I mean, nasty weather there for Pancata. So close to being able to clutch that out, and had he been able to, that would have stopped a bit more of that momentum there from the side of Fnatic, who were able to string together four consecutive rounds right there in the middle of that half. But now, it's on Sentinels to try to bounce back, and one of the ways they're going to be able to do that is with 10, so let's go ahead and we'll take a closer look at uh, some highlights from him and Durka, because from the outset, Durka really kicked things off. He upped the pace immediately, and then 10, it took a little while, was able to eventually catch up. Yeah, that he did. And now as we look towards this second half, I think it's going to continue to be defined by this Jet head-to-head, -head, how both of these players are being used by their teams with their decision-making on that attacking side. Tenses look good thus far, but what 
Fnatic has had is better coordination as a team. We're seeing the individual moments, but it still feels like the coordination could use a little bit more work. I'm looking towards death with this defensive calling. Yeah, it seems like uh, Coach Mini and Boaster's prep work has definitely paid off here on Haven. And look, I mean, this is what you expect on the pick of, of uh, I believe this is a Fnatic's pick. So yeah. if you really want to do the, uh, you know, the, 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 kind of like the, the microscope into the matchup, this is going all according to the plan for Fnatic. How does Sentinels try and bring this back? Let's send it back over to the casters. And I love the highlighting there of that jet head-to-head -head between Durka and Tens, two individuals that really are just carrying the weight of their team now as they're heading deeper and deeper into this Haven match. And Tens is a player that is quite interesting as well. He's had such high peaks early on in his career. 2021, just, you know, when people were talking about superstar players, all the comparisons were being made against him. Yeah. This year, 2023, Josh, seems to be a chance of redemption for him to be able to prove that he can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the top heavy hitter teams once more. I completely agree. On this pistol round, he's got a Sheriff in his hand and a desire to find a first engagement. Playing at short, same kind of place that we saw Durka looking towards time and again, but Fnatic are moving in the opposite direction. Looks like they're gonna try and focus on taking out this turret and going for some kind of C-split. Yeah. That's gonna put a lot of pressure on Def in terms of his anchoring. And Def's having a bit of a rough one so far. He's hit a couple of nice shots, but sat at the bottom of the scoreboard, 4 and 11. He just moves off the C site as the drone comes in. That's what's two. He even gets a stun off as well. So what is going to be the reaction here from Sentinels? Tara going through. It's a fast play. They just want to fight this one into Garage. It was a flash over the top, and they do want to swing with the player advantage. Just trying to, again, beam them down with that frenzy clip. Not working out still. There's that 3v3, and the players are low on either side. Yeah, it now gets a bit awkward for Fnatic because they don't control Garage and they also don't control C Long. And still with the dash enabled. Here with the back of the side, a little jiggle, maybe opens himself up here, but this close position by Boaster could be everything for them. Tapping away still, just holding a little bit too close. Flash dodged away and Tens claims the second at the back of the site. It's all for Leo to do and unfortunately just cannot withstand the onslaught that was coming his way. That is what you want to see. Sentinels with a lovely retake, and also Tens finding his opportunities. Adess was talking about how good the coordination was there, but I think that post setup was really awkward by Fnatic. They're holding a flash off contact, but Tens has already killed the contacting player before the flash is anywhere near coming through. Look how late that flash was. Tens with all the opportunities to take two 1v1s. And I, I think you're right, Brent. This year is set up for Tens' redemption arc because at the beginning of the game, he's just absolutely on top. I think he still holds the record for the highest ACS of any kind of MVP candidates at big events. His performance at Reykjavik was unbelievable. Yeah. But there's been so many questions about, has this guy still got it? You know, does he just want to be a streamer? You know, all of the, all of the same stuff that people say whenever people get too popular. But he said, when Sentinels were forming this team, he said to the head coach, Listen, I still want to compete. I still want to be the best. Yeah, still wants to try and make his mark on the global stage, that competitive environment. This is a weaker buy for Fnatic Pancada. Okay, taking a fight right to them. Fully blinded up, though, and Durka does get handed a pretty easy kill, but ultimately left in a 1v3. Gonna need to channel something on Holy to be able to win this. I've seen Durka win 1v3s on Haven A before. <laughs> But I think this one does look a little too difficult. It's also one that Sentinels have got to win. Yeah, I will say 50 seconds left in the round. He's cutting noise just by walking, but second is watching this angle with a little jiggle peek. He doesn't offer any more as well. Look at that, just gets the information and backs away, playing quite patiently. He knows that this is gonna pull the defenders towards A. But he's a bit slow to rotate off fully and try and get a free plant on C. Tens is thinking about it, though. Has to spread out again, just in case. Dirk has made a mad dash to the opposite side of the map. But I don't think this one's going to be dangerous. Yeah, uh, with 20 seconds left. I think, actually, Dirk is in, at risk of not even dying. Yeah, you don't want to save this, uh, this weaponry into this round right now. Have to be going for oh. the plan or something. Nana Swarm preemptively popped off, and yeah. Death ready for it. Will fall. So have Sentinels got something cooked up? So we were talking about the difference between these compositions, and Sentinels comp has the ability to play really aggressive. 
two flashes and a paranoian, uh, paranoia to work with. You know, a lot of stuff to go forwards, and then power tends to take really aggressive fights. Yeah. Um, maybe we see that here. Tense has a marshal, so not the best synergy in the world to work with, but I think a big push towards a lobby might net them some, some value. It looks like they want to really fight over this one. That's four players from Sentinels grouping over into that particular area. Util exchange on either side. The dart being smoked off, so... Goal of this one, pushing Pankata up close. Now, probably off the contact of Tens with the Marshal. That's where the paranoia is going to be let ripped. The Fnatic have read this quite effectively, I think. Now, not willing to really just offer any easy kills towards Sentinels. Instead, they're going to be contacting to a completely different area of the map. Yeah, they've found the opening. They have found the gap in the defense. And Def is going to be asked to do a lot. Def and Pankata also full bought in this round. So oh, yeah. they'd be in a challenging spot if Def goes down. Can't be losing his rifle right early. Here's the dash through. Has to go for a bit of a spam kill here. Leo is being isolated, surrounded right now. But yeah, holds the angle and Sassy just Wades right into him. Alfie is back there. That flash was not oh. good from second. A bit of a self flash there, but. And now things are getting horrible for Sentinels. They kind of need to just save two weapons into this round. They really do. And lose the rifle. They, they got destroyed before they were anywhere near setting up for the retake. And Fnatic just got the easiest round of their lives. And Sentinels have two players that can't buy this round. 10-5 being the scoreline, such a difference in these rounds. You need every weapon, every advantage you can carry forwards. So what they're going to be opting into. It looks like the replays are going on. I can see the money that's going on. It does seem like they're opting into just forcing up into this round, but it means the weapons are not good. Pankata's working with a sheriff while all this is going on in this setup. Yeah, this is last chance desperation mode for Sentinels. They need somebody to go huge, and uh, Tens is not here. All that YouTube are just being dumped through. There you go. Fault line. It's done on the one side. Sentinel's opting to just completely get out of there. So they want to play for this retake now, but the weapons, like I said earlier, are just not good for it. I mean, Tens has got an operator. And Sassy's also got no flashes. One is going to come back online at some point in the round, but they're really relying on Zekin's utility, and I, I would give Tens the rifle. Yeah, they have done that, actually. Top to the round, so Sassy. Holding the operator now. We'll see what Tens opts to do. Paranoia rips his way across, including the stun as well. Finding a one fight. No! All just being met pound for pound, match for match. The crossfire just far too potent from Fnatic. And Chronicle claiming four in the round. Real difference maker for this squad. And Boaster with memories of that final map of Reykjavik on Haven, where Sentinels lifted the trophy in his head. With memories of that going through his head, he has delivered such a good performance right here as uh, on the beginning of his revenge tour. Yeah, starts here. This is absolute dominance from Fnatic. Sentinels look like they are completely out of the game. We saw some flashes of brilliance in the first half, but other than that, the coordination, the utility usage, the, the game plan ideas just all in favor of Fnatic so on Haven. This was a great map pick to start things off. Making it 11 to 5. Fault line to push back the players there. Now, look at this. It's a risk to be taken. Rolling Thunder, though, being set up. This is Chronicle. And he's going to clear this through all of A. Players trying to hold close. Ah, this is going to catch on to them, right? He's far enough back. No one from Fnatic might be able to swing off this, though, in short. They're playing pretty far back there, so. Not ready yet. What are they waiting for right now? Maybe a bit of util to come back? Yeah, it's yeah, Leo with the dart. Waiting for that recon to come back but, online. But I do think these short players need to be a little further forwards. Now they start moving their way forwards. They're into good space. And, and here we go. What a start. That's it. Everything just sent flying. Updraft right round the corner. Even the aftershock. Sublime placement of the utility. So well executed. And that double stack. The risky play by Sentinels here on their weaker buy does not pay off. Fnatic. Looking so damn ready to take that 12th round, set themselves up on map point. It looks sublime, doesn't it? Yeah, it's so good. Remaining. And Fnatic are going to take that step closer to taking map one. And it would have to be uh, an almost impossible miracle run for Sentinels to mount any kind of comeback. Fnatic looks so in control. The game plans 
are gorgeous. Brent, a lot of the times, super teams do not live up to the hype. It's obviously way too early to call it for any of the teams in VCT with the year just starting. But I like what I'm seeing so far from Fnatic. They haven't just strung together a bunch of good players on their team. They've got a nice game plan and good ideas of the roles that, and how the synergies are going to operate. Yeah. Very nice from them. Just a replay of that round as well. But this is do or die for Sentinels in the, this the particular map. The recon die is also so good that Leo throws because if it gets broken, they breach on them. If it doesn't get broken, it clears out short and they know that they don't need to breach out that position and they can save it. You know, there's, there's a serious thought process been put into this. And this is one of the things that Fnatic always does is start out tournaments with amazing ideas. Yeah. Including this one, Shaktard over the top. Land right at the front side of B, so that's going to be just clearing out all that utility. It was popped off early though, Durka. Updraft Ash play, he is stunned up though for the moment. Even the darts are clear through the back of the site, but this is Sentinels that now need to answer with something else. They're close to a couple of ultimates with this plant. It's going off and there's no problems whatsoever. It's now setting themselves up into the post plant. What an opening with second falling. You don't have that breach utility. And how do you win this? Cosmic Divider cut the one side up. Tens. Never open a forum. Seekers though gonna be spreading out into the site. Trailblazer even missing. This wall so difficult. No to sky burst through. There is no flash to break through this. And time is ticking. Finally it regens, but already the fight being taken. Sassy trading out, winning it, Pancada with the flank. Reflanking through, it's all down to Leo. In that 1v2, one fight isolated, half of the defuse, Sassy sticks it, the percentage play, there's no way you're sticking this all the way! Unbelievable! The absolute cojones on him to make a play like that. And for the first time in the series, we see the value of adding Sassy and Pancada to this roster. That duo just played so well towards the end, and I, I, I'm... I'm speechless at what Sassy just did. I mean, when you are literally on map point, why not throw caution to the wind? Seemed like an unwinnable position for Sassy. And yet he gives Sentinels one more lifeline. Still not looking good. For all the heroics, it is still not looking good. Gonna take it one step at a time, one round at a time if you are Sentinels, because like you said, Josh is still fanatic in that driving seat. Knives now going to be ripped out for 10. Still, that's going to be a lockdown. Instantly, the Hunter's Fury is used. Leo was ready for this one. No hesitation. Play is falling left, right, and center. And they just cannot capitalize. Sassy, the last man standing. He's had an easy one. The barrel of the gun just opened it out a little bit too wide. Drone tagging. It's going to push him back. Just hoping for the reswing there with that pre fire. But Fnatic are looking more than ready now to take this one. Surrounding him, the reposition. Look at this from Durka. To the back of garage, it's just unwinnable. Layers of utility, no one giving him an easy fight. Beams him down, but left to five health and the double up positions. Look at it, waiting it out with the patience. Intelligent play from Fnatic, and they take map one in this series 13 6. Good start in the series for Fnatic on their map pick, looking completely in control from about the middle of the first half. We called it an IGL's playground, and I think. Not just Boaster's calling, but also the game plan, the preparation was so evident and looking super strong. Sentinels are going to be hard pressed to fight back on split here. This Fnatic team is not messing around. They're, they're worthy of the title so far of Super Team. What an interesting series we potentially have as well. The fact that Sentinels' next map pick is split. It's a map that has haunted them throughout the entirety of this org's existence, but that is going to be interesting. We're going to be finding out just on the other side of this break just how the rest of this series is going to be playing out.
gives you wings. Red Bull gives you wings.